Welcome everyone. In today's video, we'll be comparing SN1, 2, and 3 in terms of design and performance. I hope you can learn a thing or two during this video and don't make the same mistakes as I have. A little history. I started off by making small rocket motors with cardboard and PVC and use a dry mix propellant and clay for the nozzle and bulkhead. This is a really good place to start off because it's cheap, easy, and relatively safe. The SN series rocket motors were and still are being developed to support a rocket launch. Each motor plays a specific role in achieving its objective. SN1 is a proof of concept motor designed to achieve reliable and consistent performance, laying the foundation for future improvements. SN2 focused on an easier assembly and improved reusability. SN2 tested multiple repellents and featured a slight increase of propellant capacity. SN3 was a major upgrade with fully reusable capabilities. Addressing the nozzle degradation seen in other versions, SN3 also carried significantly more propellant, enhancing performance. SN1 featured a fully aluminum nozzle with a 30 degree converging half angle and a 15 degree diverging half angle. The throat diameter was half an inch with a length of 0.1. While the nozzle was expected to wear slightly with every test, this design prioritized cost efficiency due to the simpler production process. The bulkhead was very basic, consisting with an aluminum cylinder with cuts to reduce mass and fit o-rings. Both the nozzle and bulkhead were equipped with two high temperature o-rings to ensure proper sealing. Assembling SN1 was a significant challenge, especially when it came to aligning the casing holes with threads on the nozzle and bulkhead. The difficulty arose by two main factors. The nozzle and bulkhead were flush with the casing surface, and the holes around the casing were not perfectly precise. To drill the holes, I improvised by using a sheet of paper as a guide. While this method allowed me to complete the task, it introduced inaccuracies that made the assembly more difficult. This means the nozzle and bulkhead had only one correct orientation. After identifying the heat damage on SN1's nozzle, SN2 included an aluminum nozzle with a stainless steel insert. This nozzle featured a 44.2 degree converging half angle and a 15 degree diverging half angle. The throat diameter was 0.45 inches with a length of 0.15. The bulkhead design for SN2 was very similar to SN1, retaining the use of two O-rings for sealing. Assembly of the nozzle and bulkhead were significantly easier in SN2. Thanks to the addition of a lip that stopped the nozzle and bulkhead at a specific point within the casing. I also created a plastic jig to precisely drill the holes in the casing. This improvement meant that all the holes in the nozzle and bulkhead were aligned perfectly, allowing mounting in any orientation. SN2's nozzle performed better than SN1's, but still experienced some damage in the aluminum section. SN3's nozzle, now entirely made of stainless steel, was designed for much greater usability compared to SN1 and SN2. This nozzle features a 45 degree converging half angle with a 15 degree diverging half angle and a throat diameter of 0.4 inches with a length of 0.12. Despite the change to a heavier material, SN3's nozzle was actually lighter than SN2's nozzle due to adjustment of geometry and reduction of volume. Additionally, SN3's nozzle and bulkhead only used one o-ring, reducing the size and total weight while maintaining functionality. Now for the fun part. Real quick, if you're part of the 2,800 returning viewers that haven't subscribed yet, please do. Also for SN2, I was able to test it in my custom flame trench face down. This test did damage the flame diverter, but it will be repaired before the next test. This static fire provided valuable data on how the motor expands during the burn, which will be crucial for the future rocket development. 
Additionally, this test simulated flight-like conditions, which further enhances data collection. SN1 was tested a total of six times, with the first firing on March 25th and the last on August 20th. It achieved an average total impulse of 280 newton seconds and a peak thrust of 145 newtons during its test series. SN2 completed a total of four test fires beginning on September 21st and ending on October 26th. It delivered an average total impulse of 580 newton seconds and a peak thrust of 200 newtons, showcasing its significant improvements over SN1. SN3 has performed two static fires so far, with the first on November 24th and the most recent on December 7th. Due to SN3's failure, we do not have too much reliable data. Let's take a look at one of the most important parts of the motor. SM1's initial igniter was just a simple ball of propellant on an electric fire fuse. This was fine, but it resulted in a slower engine startup. For SN1's 5th and 6th static fire, I implemented a new igniter. This igniter was also used for SN2's tests. The igniter worked as planned, reducing the startup time compared to the last. But this design was much more complex with many more steps and procedures. For SN3, I started off with the same igniter. But after the first static fire, it was clear that it wasn't powerful enough. For SN3's second test, I went back to the simpler SN1's igniter but then I added black powder inside the fuel grain to improve startup. To make it easier to apply the powder, I soaked it in acetone to make a paste. After I add the paste, the acetone will evaporate off leaving a nice coat of powder. This decreased the ignition time to 1.5 seconds. SN4 will have a modified version of SN3's nozzle. This motor will also have slightly less propellant because it will be flying next year. The main improvement will be positioning the bolt holes further away from the edge of the casing to prevent tear out. There will be also a bunch of small improvements. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment, and like. And if you'd like to support my work, you can buy me a cup of coffee. Thank you.